Hey, hey, I'm Shay Keister, and I'm your host for the Casual Cattle Conversations podcast, the beef producer's place to explore new management practices. Thanks for tuning in, and welcome to the community. Hey there, folks, it's Shay here, and I am super excited for today's episode. I get to visit with one of my friends, Chelsea Camblin. And I'm going to have Chelsea share her journey as a livestock photographer, but we're also going to talk about how cattle producers can use photographers to their advantage when it comes to marketing their cattle. So Chelsea's going to provide tips for everybody involved in the livestock photography process on today's episode. Now, before we dive into that conversation, for those of you out there who have ever wondered if starting a podcast is right for you. I want to let you know that I'm here to empower you and support you and help you get your podcast idea up off the ground and running from zero to having that podcast launched and promoted and getting your first downloads. I want to be there for you. So I am opening up five spots to accept one-on-one clients. So that means it's going to be you and me one-on-one for six weeks to get your podcast going. Six weeks, that's all it's going to take. So if you are interested in having the opportunity to work with me and finally have your voice shared with the rest of the world and have a platform that you can do that consistently, be sure to get a hold of me by going to the show notes. There's a podcast coaching link down there and I want you to connect there or you can go to my website and hit the contact me page. So with that, let's get on with today's episode. All right, Chelsea. Well, I am super excited to have you on the show for a couple of reasons. First of all, because I haven't seen you in a while or talked with you in a while other than a few Instagram DMs. And I guess the real reason you're on the show is because I love your photography. So thanks for deciding to hop on today and visit with folks about uh, livestock photography and all that that entails and your own journey. Oh, thank you very much. I'm super excited to be here. So to kind of start off, I know we were able to chat last September, which it's weird to think that it's been like a year since we met, almost a year since we met down in Texas Yeah, at that summit with Natalie and Tara and the other ladies. But I would like to hear your beginning journey with livestock photography. Like how did you get started with photography? Um, so when I was in fifth grade, I took a photography class and I had like this, it was a little blue point and shoot camera. Um, and the only thing that would honestly let me take the picture was my show steers. (laughs) And I absolutely loved it. Um, and then from there, my high school graduation present was a actual camera. It was a DSLR, um, Nikon. And that's why I shoot Nikon now. Um, and I've tried many different things. I've tried, I've gone and done portraits and weddings and all of the above. Um, but I've always been pulled back to cattle and livestock and like the ranching and Western lifestyle type photography. And so that's kind of why I'm here now. (laughs) Did you show a lot? Were you in the show space quite a bit growing up with livestock? Um, yeah, so we were trying to raise our own. Um, we finally got kind of good at it right when I was getting done showing. Um, and then my younger brother and sister um, went on and showed in more national shows than I did. And um, so I followed them around with my camera and stuff too, um, just to capturing everything that I could get. Well, that's really cool. And we'll kind of dive more into the different types of photography that you do a little later, but I really want to talk about the purpose of a photographer in the livestock industry. So in your mind, and we're even going to niche this down to the beef industry, what is the purpose of a livestock photography for? Like what value do you think they're, they are providing to the beef industry today? Um, so it comes down a lot to, um, well, let's put it this way. So a fast food restaurant has like subpar burgers, but they have high quality photos of those subpar burgers. So why would you want a subpar photo of a high quality animal or whatever you have going on? 
um, is kind of where I think that the livestock photographers have a purpose. Um, Cause I mean, you can go out and take a picture I mean, but if to honestly get someone that like cares about what they look like, knows how to get them to set up, get the lighting right, have the equipment to do it and the time to do it is all just a lot right there. So that's kind of where I think that we come in is we help you put your product um, out there to your customers at the highest quality possible. Absolutely. So what about having like ranch lifestyle pictures taken because I feel like I know a lot of people who always have pictures of their cattle but even like people who've been on my show if I ask for just a picture of them or them and their family they're like well I don't have one that's like updated I can maybe find one from like seven to ten years ago so what do you think the purpose of like even having some of those ranch lifestyle storytelling pictures is that's really important too because like the social media world that's all social media is is telling your story um who you are what you're about what you're doing what you're doing um and then pictures play a huge part in that um because I mean a picture is worth a thousand words and if they are good and they're you have a great photographer they can tell your story in a really unique and interesting way I think even if it's just a snapshot a snapshot of that particular moment or that season or whatever you're trying to portray Absolutely. So you mentioned earlier when you were talking about how you got started that you've tried different photography, whether that's livestock or weddings or other family pictures, whatever it may be, but you always get drawn back to livestock photos. So what types of livestock photos are you taking? Are you specializing in any specific species? Do you take the lifestyle pictures? What what do you do? <laughs> um. <laughs> so all winter long is mainly production sales stuff so I do bull sales for the most part um my summers are more into the ranch lifestyle photography um every once in a while families are thrown in there just because it's kind of like what you were talking about where they're um I'm taking pictures of their cows and they're like well while you're at it can you get a couple of us too and so I usually um have a few of those um, and then I do quite a few county fairs um, and events like that. I do a couple of rodeos and then I do um, some horse sale stuff also. So kind of a lot of everything, but it's all based around the same genre. Do you have video mixed in there too? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I've worked really hard at um, making sure that I really understand how to do a good job of videos because um, I believe that videos are really downplayed and it's something that I don't think needs to be as downplayed as it is. So do, do you think better? that, do you think that videos are going to advance even more than they already have in the, when we look at production sales, because I feel like they're continually becoming a more key factor in how people promote. Yeah, I think so. hundred percent. Um, I play around with the type of videos that I do. You're not going to just get your typical bull walking by sale video. Um, you'll get a lot of, um, I'll help you make reels out of them and be able to put them on your um, social media, whatever that may look like. Um, and then I try to make sure that the videos are super high quality so that when people are watching them on YouTube or wherever you're posting them, um, or even on sale day when you have them on those massive TV screens, if that's how you're running them through the ring, that they look really good. You're not just getting a blurry, maybe whatever video. Um, I work really hard on trying to make sure that the animal looks really good. You get all the good angles and they look really good walking across the screen um, and you can see them, which I think is a big deal. Okay. So for you, when you're in the picture pen or in the video pen, what goes in to making sure that you are getting the best possible images or video of each individual animal? Um, so my first thing is to um, really look at the animals. So I usually kind of look at them as they're in their pens and stuff like that to see um, what we're going to video. Um, and then I look at a lot at their disposition and stuff like that. Um, cause that plays a huge part in how much room we need to give them. 
And then after that, I start working towards um, where they need to stand in the pen and stuff like that and um, how to get the best angle and what that bull needs to work on and where his strong points are. Um, and then I try really hard to get all the angles and then of course getting their ears forward and the head up is a huge thing. How has your background in the livestock industry helped you become a better photographer, do you think? Um, showing has helped me a ton uh, just because that's what showing is. You are displaying that animal the best possible way that it can be displayed. And so growing up in that, I really learned how to display different types of animals or cattle mainly the best possible way. Um, and I think that has helped me immensely. So if you could start over with your photography journey, is there anything you would do differently? Um, I would have directly started pursuing what I wanted, which I knew, which was livestock. Um, I told myself I needed to go out and play around, which I think is really good. I did learn a lot from all of those, but I spent a lot of time on um, places I didn't need to be. And then um, just go for it. The worst that people can say is no. And I mean, you'll get used to it and move on to the next person. So <laughs> I think I've had a lot more no's than yeses in life. So I agree. Exactly. <laughs> Hey folks, after you are done listening to today's episode, go check out one of my favorite podcasts, Discover Egg. On Discover Egg, hosts Natalie Kavarik and Tara Vanderdusen give their professional farming opinions on top trending topics in the ag and food space to help you better understand the food systems and connect with the hands that feed you. Expect to be wildly entertained and informed as you tune in every Thursday and discover what's new in the world of agriculture. This is my go-to podcast to learn about both sides of the story when it comes to national and global politics, as well as trending agriculture stories in the media. So again, once you're done with today's episode, go check out Discover Ag and be sure to subscribe. So I kind of want to, you know, I might have jumped around there a little bit, but I want to go back to kind of the video day process or picture day process. So when you're working with a cattle producer, how can cattle producers best help you to make sure that you can do your best job as the photographer? Um, so it starts really early um, at the beginning of our conversations. The main thing is, is to make sure that we're both on the same page for pen setup, um, what the weather is going to do. So we'll have a main date and usually a backup date. And then also um, talk about who you're doing your catalogs with or however you're going to display these photos and kind of help us with our timeline because that also helps us editing schedule and everything else that we have going on. And then from there, um, when I arrive, so again, it'll be the pen set up. I'll kind of walk through the pen figure out where the highs and lows are. Um, we'll talk about the plan for the day um, and kind of how you want to work them, talk about your favorites, which one you really want to focus on and get the best picture we possibly can, which we try to do with every single one, but there's going to be one special one that you work extra hard at. Um, and that kind of wraps it up for like the main part. And then post-production is just um, give us time to work on them. We Everyone works as hard and as fast as they can, but um, I do understand that usually everyone wants to wait as long as possible to get their pictures before they have to turn in into the catalog so that the bulls look the best that they can. So yeah, just comes down to a lot of communication. So what about like having help, like whether that's cleaning up bulls or getting ears, is that helpful too? Or do you ever bring help someone along to important. do that? Yeah, help is super important. Um, so um, it depends on what kind of pictures you want. If you want the bulls to be cleaned up, definitely hire help to do that. I mean, I can help you do that, but that will slow our day up a whole bunch. And if we're trying to get through 100 head of bulls, it's going to take us four days instead of two days to get through all of them. And then... Um, Picture pen help, I, the perfect setup is two people in the pen. So you have me and two other people 
So that'd be three total. And then you have someone bringing you bowls and someone putting bowls away or, you know, your gate exit or your enter and exit gates are, you just have a flow of system. Cause as soon as you have a stop or a bottleneck, that's where things get slowed down. So, and, but if you have too many people in the picture pen, then you have, you have way too much going on. They bowls don't have, they have too many things to look at and it just doesn't look as good as it needs to. He is too distracted. And sometimes a little antsy too. Sometimes the, the bowls don't seem to like that if there's a lot of people yeah. in one pen, which I guess I wouldn't like it either. <laughs> right, overcrowded in their bubble. <laughs> That's kind of how I work on so. <laughs> so how far in advance should ranchers reach out to their to a photographer if they want pictures for their catalog? Like when do they need to be like um, booking a photographer? I know that this is um, a hard question because not everyone is organized and remembers that they need to get their photographer booked. Um, I really enjoy at least having two months in advance, um, which is really hard too because of weather. But like I said, we usually do um, book several dates and then I try to be really flexible with them. And if it's stormy in one place, it might be better in another place and I can swap um, with some people. It usually doesn't happen like that. Um, I appreciate at least a week or two in advance notice before I have to be somewhere. <laughs> I suppose that depends on how far away you have to travel too. Yeah, exactly. And again, it comes down to weather. <laughs> weather plays a huge part in what I do. What's the farthest you've ever traveled? Um... I have traveled from the lowest, the south, most southern part I've been is southern Colorado. And then the most upper part I've been is um, north Montana. I've been pretty high in Idaho too, but it's usually my time range is between 200 to 500 miles. So okay. uh, one way, but I'll go anywhere. <laughs> so you talked about having a flow system for the picture pen almost you made it sound like there'd be like you know if the bulls were in one pen and then they enter you take a picture and then they can leave and go into another pen is that correct so then yeah they what can about like be. a background what what type of picture background do you like what do producers need to be thinking about on that front or bedding um, so everyone is different. It kind of depends on what they want to showcase for bedding. Um, I prefer, uh, um, straw or corn stalks. They seem to, especially the black bulls, really, um, make them pop and stand out. Um, and the red kettle also look really good on that. Um, any of them really. And then for backgrounds, um, it depends on what you have going on. If you, um, like if I took some pictures, for some Denver heifers, we went out and did them in our hay meadow. We had just cut it and the grass was, um, it was like fallish, so it wasn't green, but it looked pretty decent. And then um, we had a natural background. So you had the hills in the background and stuff like that. Um, when winter comes, I mean, you have to put something down. You gotta have your straw or your corn stalks. And then for a background, if you have to have them paneled, I really um, like either, like I said, a natural background where you can see Around you, um, some people use the tin windbreaks, which aren't too bad. Um, you got to remember that you can see along the bottoms of those. So, so you can see like, I don't know if you have a dog running around behind them, you can see that. And then if you have kettle behind there, you can see that also. Um, something that I found recently was the windscreens. You can get them off of Amazon for like 50 bucks and for a hundred feet or 50 feet. I don't remember how far long it is now. But you can get a tan windscreen for really cheap and it covers the panels really nice um, and it's not reflective. So that is really nice because if it's reflective, then you have that brightness and too much contrast against your animal. Oh, well, that's that's a good thing to know. Thanks for sharing that. So if you could like wave a magic wand and change one thing that cattle producers do either on picture day or getting ready for picture day what would that be um a lot of it is just being prepared 
And then obviously the weather, if you can like wave a wand and make the sun shine just perfect all day, I would just be so happy. <laughs> but a lot of it is just being prepared and organized, um, know what's going on. I mean, the first time that someone comes to your house to take pictures, you're still learning and I'm trying, it's a hard process, but um, we'll get through it. Patience. We can re-answer that when I have a lot of things that popped into my head. Okay. Do you want to re-answer it? Yeah. Let's do okay. that. So Chelsea, if you could wave your magic wand and change any one thing or maybe multiple things about how cattle producers either prepare for or handle picture day, what would you change? Um, so my first thing would be to have perfect weather. If I can have the wand wave every time and give me a perfect weathery day, I would be so happy. Um, the second thing would be preparedness. Um, just make sure you understand what you have going on, what, what your plan is. Um, and that comes down to the communication beforehand. And then that morning of, as I arrive, usually we go over the plan and what's going on. Um, if you're ready, then I'm ready. And we can get through the day much quicker. And then um, patience. It's really hard to get um, a bull in a pen all by himself with three strangers to settle down be calm. And then obviously to have his feet in the right spot and his head up and the sun just, it takes a lot of patience to get that perfect little picture to set up. And usually it's for five shots and then I'm like, okay, you can kick them out. So <laughs> it's a lot of work for one shot so speaking of getting bulls set up and their ears right and head in the right spot what are your favorite tips and tricks for getting bulls to have their head up and their ears forward um a lot of it also depends on um what the producer uses for um cattle prods I guess so like if they use flags so usually won't look at them as much as people that don't use flags um some like the paddles because it makes the noise um the best things that I have actually found is the dog toy aisle if you go there you can get like a five dollar plastic pig that makes a weird noise or a chicken and like they love that and then um I also like to go to the dollar store and get um, a ton of like multiple colored ribbons and just tie them all together and basically make myself a pom-pom um, that seems to help and again that comes back to whether or not they use a flag a lot or not because mm -hmm. they'll be used to that and they won't work their head up at it so it, like it, it just kind of depends on how they're ran but that's those are the best things that I found and then if the producer is willing to run around and make a fool of himself all the better <laughs> <laughs> you never catch that on video do you um, I try to be really nice because I don't like pictures of myself taken um, when I'm being um, crazy. So if I do get one, it's usually like a good one. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyone who's ever been in the picture pen um, fully understands what it takes sometimes. So, okay, Chelsea. So as we kind of wrap up today, what tips or advice do you have for any beginning livestock photographers? Um, so I recently got this advice. Um, I was on a one-on-one -on -one call with Kinsey Holmberg, I think is how you say her last name, um, with Bonafide Cowboy. And we were talking about pricing and I get pricing is really hard for anyone. And um, her advice was to price yourself for what you need. So um, set a goal for how much money you need to make by the end of the year or how much money you want to make by the end of the year. Or I figured both, I figured out both. So I know how much money I need to make to make ends meet as a full-time livestock photographer. And I have it broken down per head. Um, so that's my advice. Figure out how much you need to make and go from there instead of shopping around and just following the market because that might not be what you need. Um, and then my second advice is to um, purchase um, high quality socks and always remember your sunscreen because no one likes cold toes and a burnt nose. So that's all my advice. <laughs> okay, Chelsea. So where can people go to connect with you and find more information? 
So you can go to my website, which is chelseacamlinphotography.com and find out all the different things that I do um, and see examples of my pictures and video work. You can also go to my Instagram. I spend the most time there, um, which is at Chelsea Camblin, spelled with two E's. And then I also have a Facebook page, which is Chelsea Camblin Photography. Well, awesome. And I'll be sure to connect those in the show notes as well so that people can find that information right by the podcast episode. Thanks again for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. And that's a wrap on that one, folks. Thank you for tuning in today and joining in on the conversation. Be sure to take this a step further and take the advice you learned and implement it on your operation. If you want to have a conversation about it, head over to my social media and send me a DM by following at Cattle Convos and connecting with me there. Have a great day.